MLB teams are allowed to place injured players on the 60-day IL today, which will free up some roster spots for notable free agents remaining. We'll break that down and some potential moves that we might see on this episode of Jays Digest, as well as the Blue Jays pitching staff. They seem locked in for the 2023 season, so we'll have that and much more coming up. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host Nick Goss. I'm glad to be back. Shout out to Nick for holding the fort down while I've been uh, super busy the last couple days. And shout out to the Kansas City Chiefs for winning the Super Bowl as well. A uh, bit of a bit of a finicky call uh, down the stretch there. Might have ruined one of the better Super Bowls that we've seen in uh, in recent memory. But uh, shout out to both teams. It was just a great game. Yeah, that's why we didn't upload yesterday. We just took the day off and uh, enjoyed the Super Bowl. I'm sure you guys did too. But yeah, spring training has officially kind of started. People are starting to uh, report to, to camp. But before we get into that, we have some interesting things to go through. And a big move may be coming as soon as tonight. And we will be going live in a couple hours as of watching this video to uh, to discuss all this. But this came out from an article the other day saying, this is from, uh, I believe it was Gregory. He said, what might change? A lot. Varsho, Kiermaier, and Springer are locked in as the starting three. But the Jays have almost no depth behind them. Moving an infielder to the outfield is a potential solution. But a better one would be bringing in someone from outside the organization. There's a good chance that will happen soon. And then he went on a tweet again. I don't have it for you here now. But essentially just saying that he thinks that the Blue Jays will make a move, whether it's today or before the you know season starts, another move to bring in the fourth outfielder. And the article essentially was just going over potential options for the fourth outfielder spot, whether it should be internal or external. And it seems to uh, he seems to think that it will be an external uh, factor. Yeah, that's actually Gregor Chisholm who, yep. who tweeted that. So, uh, yeah, he's been on the money with a few things uh, that's happened, not only for the Toronto Blue Jays, but just around baseball in general. Uh, he's a pretty good reporter. I like the work that he does, and uh, I follow him on Twitter as well. Uh, but, yeah, I think, uh, I think this is a sign that a move may be coming on the horizon for the Toronto Blue Jays, just because they still have that fourth outfield spot to fill as well. Uh, most... Uh, you know, I'm sure they're looking for a guy that mashes lefties, uh, i.e. like a Robbie Grossman type player or, you know, someone similar to to Robbie Grossman, who Kyle Garlick is a name that, that's come up quite a bit as well. Uh, but the Jays have a lot of depth, and that's been very well documented, and they've made some great additions in the offseason. But uh, that's why we're going live tonight. We expect a move to happen because Hunjin Ryu has been placed on the 60-day IL, as well as Chad Green. I, I don't know if it's confirmed yet, but they're able to do it today. So uh, I expect something to happen, Nick. Yeah, and that's the big thing, and that's why he thinks, uh, we think at least, if there's a move to be done, it will be, if not today, starting today, going into the offseason. and. Let's just touch on Robbie Grossman a bit because he is the main target that's left for the Blue Jays. And obviously, we look at his stats here and nothing too special last year when initially looking at it. And it kind of gives some hope for the Blue Jays because obviously his numbers were not great last year. Below league average hitter. Obviously, he was great in 2021 and 2020. But like you mentioned, he mashes lefties. And you can look at his splits versus lefties and they are astronomical. 64 OPS plus against righties, but against left-handed pitching, a 183 TOPS plus. It, he is phenomenal against lefties, and maybe that's why our, my guess would be that he's holding out for a you know a full-time job in the outfield, but it doesn't seem like any teams are going to give it to him, especially because of his lack of ability to hit right-handed pitching. But it seems like he'll fit right into the Blue Jays if they are able to get him against lefties. Yeah, that that's what I was going to say, Nick. I'm not sure if he wants to come to the Toronto Blue Jays just because the playing time might not be there. There's three really good outfielders, but the one silver lining that he may be able to find is that two of those three tend to get injured quite a lot. And would the would the Blue Jays rather have Robbie Grossman or Kevin Biggio at, or Whit Merrifield as a fill-in in the outfield? Because Grossman still plays a pretty decent corner outfield. You know, he's a solid defender out there. I expect uh, Dalton Varsho to slide into center field when Kevin Kiermaier uh, misses a couple games here and there. Same thing for George Springer. He could slide into center field. So you don't need a center fielder for your fourth outfielder because you already got three of them, right? So uh, Grossman, he hits lefties very well. I don't expect him to play against righties barring any injuries, but uh, it's not a bad option to have. It all depends on Robbie and whether he wants to play a full 150 games or 162 games or whatnot. Yeah, and he's kind of been the last domino to fall so far in the offseason when it comes to Blue Jays targets. And I guess the last thing, you look at his baseball savant page, and 
you know, nothing really special at all. He's an average defender with, you know, above average sprint speed. He obviously did not hit the ball very well last year. He's a very, very, very good eye. Walks a lot. He would be a perfect veteran piece to add to our team. But like you said, and like we've kind of been saying all offseason, it's a matter of whether he wants to have limited playing time or not. But if, you know, the Jays made a strong offer at the start and he's just holding out to see if he can get more playing time, which I don't think he will be able to simply because of his splits, then maybe the Blue Jays will be uh, be a good team for him. Do you have anything else you want to touch on before we move on? Yeah. The, also, if we look at his baseball savant page, that takes into account him from uh, from the left-hand side as well. You know, Correct, so it's yep. not... Uh, it's not just him as a right-handed hitter. I'm sure those splits would be skewed in the right direction if it were to be just a platoon type thing. But I think he's got uh, the potential to be a valuable contributor. He's a veteran. You know, he's been on some good teams in the past as well. So it'd be a great add if the Jays and uh, and him could come to uh, a team-friendly deal. Maybe we'll see it today. Maybe we'll see it this week. But let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on him. And let's move on to the next topic now, which is Manoa speaks out on the playoff loss alongside Jordan Romano speaking out on why he's not pitching in the World Baseball Classic. Obviously, pitchers, catchers, tons of players reported today to camp. The first time, there was tons of content all over Twitter, and we'll be covering all of it. Obviously, today a little bit. Tomorrow, especially, we'll have a full, you know, kind of breakdown of all the little stuff that you guys may have missed there. But this was the, uh, this is what Alec Manoa had to say about missing out on, uh, you know, losing the World uh, Wild Card game. Sorry. Alec Manoa said it took him weeks to get over his playoff loss. I was way better than that all year, not just from time to time, all year. For me, on the biggest stage, it'd have one of my bad ones. And he basically just went on to say that he was very disappointed in himself. And again, the big thing here is it took him weeks to get over his playoff loss. And before we get into Romano and, and Manoa as well, discussing the World Baseball Classic, what are your thoughts on this? I guess this approach by uh, Manoa. Very, very, you know, I respect it. He he obviously didn't pitch to his, you know, abilities in the Walker game. It was the first time speaking to him since then and couldn't have asked for a better response. Yeah, well, we know what kind of competitor he is. We see it day in, day out, every time he's out there on that mound. And if you take away that first inning, you know, maybe maybe it's a little bit of a different story. But the Jays got off to a bad start there. And I think that set the tone, not just for game one, but for game two as well. You know, they, they just couldn't close it out. They weren't built to win in the playoffs. You know, they were not good enough. Let's just call it what it is. But I think they've done everything that they could to kind of change that course and be ready once this season rolls around. I expect a different outcome in the playoffs, whether it's a World Series victory or not. That remains to be seen. But this team is just built way better. Uh, they're more fundamentally sound. Defensively, they're better. They run the bases better. They got more balance in their lineup. So they did everything they had to do. The front office did their work. Now it's up to the players. And by all accounts, it seems that they are all locked in, whether it be Jordan Romano, whether it be Alec Manoa. Players are showing up early when they don't have to be there yet, like George Springer, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So I'm I'm excited. I'm getting fired up seeing all these videos, Nick, uh, about bearded Yusei Kikuchi. I, I, want, I want it all. I want the madness. I want the season to start. Give it to me. Yeah, and we're going to be touching on all that uh, even in more in depth tomorrow, especially some of the bearded Kikuchi uh, drama that has been going around. Positive drama, of course it is, but... Quickly, we'll touch on Manoa and Romano uh, speaking on the truth behind the World Baseball Classic and then missing out. Obviously, we had a video on it. We didn't know the exact reason, but Peter, your reason was right on the money, and it's what we kind of thought. He withdrew from Team Italy because, quote, I didn't feel like it'd be the best decision for me to rush and get ready. So, essentially, he wants to be locked in for the Blue Jays, and I love hearing this. And then Manoa had uh, basically the same thing. However, it kind of alluded back to his playoff performance. He said he turned down a chance to pitch for Team USA at the World Baseball Classic because, quote, the way the season ended, I didn't uh, be in late September with 20 more innings under my belt. Belt, It's not fair to these guys. So he doesn't want to give the extra strain. And essentially, he wants to have an extra month to prepare. Doesn't have to report till late March now instead of early March. What are your thoughts on uh, on this? And I guess the truth behind the actual reason that yeah. Romano, you know, ended up withdrawing, which was exactly what we thought to focus on the Blue Jays. I'm a little split on it because I love the World Baseball Classic just as a baseball fan. But as a Blue Jay fan, I love hearing things like this. When the players seem to be locked in, uh, they look, they all look to be in better shape. You know, they didn't take the offseason lightly. They know that they underperformed last year and that this is not really a make or break year for them. But it's time to take that next step. And uh, I don't love the next level hashtag that uh, that's associated with the team, but it is time for them to reach that next level and unlock some of that potential. It, it's time, you know, they're, they're core players, 24, 25, 26 years old. You know, this is when you start coming into your own as an MLB player. And 
I think they're all putting in the work to be ready come October. I agree. And obviously, if you love the World Baseball Classic, like we all do, it hurts a little bit not to see these great talents in there. However, as a Blue Jays fan, I'm perfectly fine having him, you know, take the extra time and not log the extra innings, especially after uh, a huge season coming up for the Blue Jays. Like you said, not make or break, but pretty close to uh, it's going to have a big factor on what the Blue Jays do going forward. But let us know your thoughts are on that. And finally, you touched on it earlier, a George Springer sighting. People who don't need to be reporting are reporting. And George Springer made an entrance today into the facilities and a lot of people that kevin kiermaier as well which will break down in tomorrow's video but quickly pop this up here that's the wrong street shot there it is george springer among the blue jays regulars getting work in the cage vlad guerrero and bo bichette as well and uh, you used to see george springer there vlad jr there bo bichette after the you know the crazy arbitration thing that happened which we'll touch on uh, later in tomorrow's video but do you have any thoughts on this? Obviously, great leadership. Great to see. I'm just honestly excited to see baseball back. And, you know, the Super Bowl is officially over. Obviously, it was great. But it's now baseball season, and tons of footage came out today, and it just got me excited. I was texting you about it. Yeah, I'm super excited as well. And uh, I love seeing the players get locked in for the season, especially when they don't even have to be there. You know, it shows the buy-in. It shows the commitment. But, George, you can stay home. We don't want you getting hurt. You know, get your reps in. Report in a couple weeks. You know, play, uh, play a couple innings here and there in spring training, but we need you, buddy. We need you for the full 162, and we need you for hopefully a long playoff run. So don't hurt yourself. Get your warm-up hacks in, but that's about it. Don't uh, don't throw. Don't throw. I agree. It'll be super exciting, and content is going to start picking up now because obviously tons of things are better start going down, maybe some moves. But that'll wrap up this video. Tomorrow we have a lot to break down. So And we have a live stream again coming tonight. If you're watching this before um, you know, the live stream happens, make sure to tune in. And if not, we'll have tons of more live streams coming. So we'll see you guys in tomorrow's video, maybe tonight's live stream. See you then. Thanks.